Oh man, we lost three yards. That's it. Quit game the game. Over. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out of here. They'll never win. Ever. Hey guys, what's up? It's Tori Mathis, your host, and I'm here with the one and only Sean Mathis, founder of Miles Through Time Automotive Museum. What's happening? So Sean and I talk a lot on the show about the fact that, you know, we go to the gym quite a bit. And, you know, before, well, especially after hurting my hip when I was in the army, I didn't do a lot of like really hardcore gym work because it seemed like I was always hurting myself again or uh, bringing my injury back. And so this, when we moved to this area, we started a new gym and I actually went and found a personal trainer there in hopes that I could get myself back into the gym and not hurt myself and go through this wave of like, I'd work out really good for a couple months and then I'd hurt myself and then I'd be out for a while. And then it would just be this whole entire thing. And I did a lot of yoga and things like that, but I never really like worked out, worked out. So my whole entire gym, Gym experience has completely changed since I started working out with the trainer. And so this trainer does a lot of CrossFit and Olympic lifting. So I have really gotten into that and I really, really like it. Like I, I never expected myself to be like a weightlifter type of person, but I have a really awesome group of people that I work out with ladies that are like my age and like we all really go for it and want to improve and kind of track how well we're doing and really awesome. And one thing I've noticed is that um, especially like with my squat or my deadlift, um, I, when I was, you know, probably, probably this change happened maybe like a year ago, I would get underneath the bar and I would start to lift it and I would feel the weight on my shoulder, like for a squat. And I would be like, Ooh, this is heavy. I can't do this. And what I've realized, and like, it's like the craziest thing is that once I felt that heavy and push through it, I realized once I got it up, like it wasn't that bad. It was initially heavy, but I have gotten so much stronger that I can lift heavy things. Do you have this with, with your weightlifting too? Uh, yeah, a little bit. There, there's definitely a, a mental thing there. And actually, I, I don't work out with the trainer. I go and do my own thing. And that's kind of like how it's the exact opposite of what Tori like. Like I, I want to go do my own thing and at my own pace and, and just do whatever you know, pops in my mind of what it is I want to do next. And I, and I like, that is how I like it. Uh, again, the exact opposite of what Tori likes. But, uh, one of the things like I I need help with is when it comes to benching, like I can only get so much weight up there without risking the bar smashing me. Uh, because I, I, you know, in order to be able to try to get to that next level, I have to put more weight on there than I've ever done before. And when that happens, there is a balance there that I, I very well aware of that is partially psychological and some of it is, you know, weight ability. But the thing is, is you don't know what that weight ability is until you get past the psychological part. You know, so if I'm open, you know, hey, I can totally do this, you know, especially when we're talking five more pounds, like theoretically, you should be able to do it unless that five pounds previously There was like, there was no way. Right at your limit, right? (laughs) But like, I had this goal of wanting to be able to do 225. But 225 is like, it's, it's at the max. Like, I definitely cannot do more than that. And even to get the one, like, to get that bar with that much weight off the rack to even attempt to do it, there's some intimidation there. And I have smashed myself with the bar already once before. Uh, it's, It's been over a year. Um, but just trying to, to lift weight where I'm like, I got it, I got it, I got it. And then I don't got it. Now I'm dealing with this bar that's laying on my chest because I didn't get this spotter. And so long story short, I tried it a couple of weeks ago and I, I, I asked a guy that was just in there, hey, will you will you spot me for this? I've never done it before. And right out of the gate, like, and I've seen this guy, He's he has benched more than the weight I was trying to go for. So... As uh, you know, he, it's obvious like uh, he knew I'm I'm a little bit smaller than him and inexperienced, but he's capable of doing it. And the stuff that came out of his mouth was like, you can do it. Like, it, it's a psychological thing. Uh, I mean, and so exactly what you were saying, Tori, it was the exact same thing he was saying that it's just one of those things that you you have to do it because it's it is such a, a massive amount of weight, especially considering when when we first started working out. 
you know, I, I'd had, I've had a couple back surgeries. I stuck with the machines where I was planted in a seat and secure, and I didn't even touch the free weights, yet alone try to bench anything. So by the time I finally got over to the bench, you know, being able to put a 45-pound weight on each side of the bar was difficult for me. So now I'm at the point where I've got two 45-pound weights on each side of the bar, and I'm trying to do this thing. And, you know, I just wanted to do one. And this guy's like, ah, you can, you know, it's just a mental thing. You just need to be able to do it. And I wound up pumping out two of them because of that. And again, uh, he, he helped me get it off the rack so that I could go up and down. But uh, I went from, like, never being able to do it to uh, this guy that I don't even really know telling me it's all in my head that I just need to be able to do it. And I wound up pumping out two of them. Well, it just made me start thinking like, man, I can lift heavy things. And that applies to so many things because I don't realize like the stuff that we do because it's just the stuff that we do. But we have moved across the country. We have changed careers. We make some pretty bold moves. And I always hear people go, oh, I could never do that. I could never do that. You get that? Oh, yeah. And you know what? You can do that. Like there is always, it's not like, it's not like the weight, like all of a sudden you're like, oh, 225, I got this now. It's no problem. Like it's always hard. It's always heavy. But once you get it up and going, like there's, there's something about that momentum. And like Sean said, getting over that, that mental thing. And I would have never thought that like, you know, squatting was like this representation of like all these things that if I could just get in my head that I can lift heavy things that I just need to get that little momentum going. Like that's all you need to get yourself to that next level. And the lift, and it's a metaphor for difficult things. You know, when we moved, we moved across country. We moved multiple states. Uh, when we moved to Georgia, the only reason we moved to Georgia was because there was a house that was on a lake, which is what we wanted at that time. It was a, a rural area. It was a vacation area. But, I mean, we got exactly what we wanted, and, I mean, it was it was not an easy move, but, you know, we made it happen and enjoyed it because we went through that difficult period of, you know, actually going somewhere new, new state, new house, you know, was it a couple hundred miles away? Um, it, it, it by no means was it easy. easy, but we did it, and we because of that, we got to enjoy lake life, like legit lake life. Uh, until we we had our our share of it. But if we waited for things to be easy, like we would, <laughs> we'd still be in California living in you know the same house, doing the same things. And I think being able to get over that little bit of hard, that little bit of challenge, that little bit of difficulty, that resistance that is there for everything. It, it's made all the difference. And I think about it too with, you know, Sean started Miles Through Time in 2017, so four years ago. And Sean didn't know about being a business owner. You know, I had run my own business, but my business is much different. My business has always been very online. I've always been able to work at my laptop. And Sean's is brick and mortar. So talk about resistance. Like it was a completely new experience. Um, you know, for me, m helping Sean to market a brick and mortar business that was our own. But for Sean, starting a business that I, you know, I could give just only so much advice because I've never done that either. So there was a, a really big hurdle in that. Um, and I'm proud of us that we're like, you know, we can lift heavy things. We can we can push past this because I really believe and I wish I could get everybody to believe this. My kids, people I know, family that like you can do these things. You can figure out anything, especially with the internet. Like some of the things I had to figure out before when the internet was newer um, might have been a little bit more challenging. But right now, like anything that you want to figure out that you don't know how, somebody has figured it out already and has probably made a YouTube video about it, you know, or put an article online about it or made a course about it, or there's a tutorial somewhere, like every single thing. Our, um, we, uh, have a pool and it has an older um, heater on it and the heater stopped working. And this heater is probably from the original pool, which is what? How old, Sean? Uh, my guess is it's 15 years old. So 15 plus. year old heater. It's what, like a, a gas heater mm -hmm. on the pool. I just typed in like heater not igniting and put the, the thing on. 
there were multiple videos of these dudes on there, like, my heater's not working, this is how I fix it, and then like, going through all the steps. It's like some random pool heater, like literally anything. And we know a lot of people that like they come across a little bit of a challenge and they and they back up. And I know the kids do the same thing. It's kind of like my mom. When I was growing up, I would always ask her how to spell a word and she would tell me to go look it up. Maybe more people's parents need to do that Mm -hmm. because I'm not afraid to go and try to figure it out. And I will probably get it wrong the first time. And and like, I think that's okay. Um, But I'm not afraid of if something doesn't work out, that it doesn't, it's not a reflection of like my character or anything like that. When you're a beginner, you've got to be expected that you're going to have challenges and you're probably going to screw things up. Um, I try not to get, get upset about those types of things. Well, and the failure part of it is completely acceptable. And that's just an, an, another mental thing that you need to be willing to accept that it, it failure is okay. Because I, I'd rather have tried and failed than to have never tried and wondered if I would have succeeded. And that's a, ultimately, that's the thing that, that pushed us towards going through with miles through time. Because again, I never had any experience with any aspect of creating this thing. And Tori didn't have any experience with the brick and mortars. But, you know, uh, ultimately, we would have regretted it for the rest of our lives if we wouldn't have at least gave it a go. Something very difficult. But again, we I mean, we, we lifted that weight. And, you know, it, it, it has been difficult, but it keeps getting better and better and better. And even if it failed tomorrow, I'd be okay with that because, you know, we did do it. You know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but at least we did it. Well, and I like that. I, I like that we, we always like try to bite off a little bit more because every time we learn something new about whatever it is, like we always find all these different ways to apply it. So whether it's something that we learned, you know, about miles through time, um, you know, with the brick and mortar or, you know, doing something like inventory or selling shirts or whatever, like then we can look at our other business and or look at our clients businesses and go, oh, like we could totally work that here, here and here. And I think we're good at kind of spreading those lessons out, whether it's a failure lesson or a success lesson, because both of those are, you know, pretty good lessons. Right. I'll take them both. I don't mind. <laughs> And I think uh, what happens with a lot of people, too, is is when they they feel that weight is so heavy that they don't want to do it. Um, but then so let's say they, they go ahead and they're, they're taking our advice and they're like, I'm going to I'm going to lift it anyways. And it winds up being you know too heavy. And so it, there's a little bit of a setback there where instead of going forward, they actually step back a little bit and. and I mean, that is where it's even more important to then lift again and, and go forward, because Sometimes when you try something, it does seem like you go backwards a little bit. I always think about it as jumping. Like you can't jump from here, like straight up. You have to go down to like get that momentum to bring yourself back up. So that little step back, like that used to bother me before. I'd be like, oh shit, (laughs) like we're going backwards. And now I'm like, oh, we're going backwards. You know what that means. Like it, like it's going to happen. Like whatever it is that we're going, like once you take that little bit backwards, big stuff happens after that. Right. And it's, it's almost like an opportunity to, you know, evaluate everything that you did on that initial push to, to try to do something that created this recoil that you had to go backwards. But now there's nothing that says that's it. You didn't hit a wall. That's just your back, you know, and now you can look at the whole picture again, take into account what you tried the first time and give it another go. And I mean, it's going to be that much better. And again, like if miles through time would have failed initially, um, but we had an opportunity to do it again. Like I, I like even right now, again, if it failed tomorrow and yet, Next week, we're like, let's let's start another car music. Like, it would be so easy to do, m- mentally at least, that I, like, I'd know exactly what we needed to do to get back to where we, we were and, and more. Well, then you know, okay, avoid this, do this, mm-hmm. avoid this. And, and it's almost like you have, you have the shortcut. Uh, or... Well, and really, we, I almost... I mean, we pretty much did that already when we I moved we did. locations. <laughs> it did feel like we started over. And we did. I mean, we started from scratch, three years in one location, offering storage and consignment, all displayed as a car museum in a building that was too small in an area that was too rural. And we moved. 
And I mean, and it was a full restructure. I mean, it was a little bit more than a move. Like it, it, it definitely, it, it's a new business. It closed, there. closed down the business uh, on the back end, uh, you know, with, with the state and all that started a new one as a nonprofit filed it as a 501 C three. We only brought over, uh, six or seven cars from the original location, which meant all the other cars were new ones that had never been in there before. Well, and the display, like that was all like the, the really nice displays, they all stayed at the old location. So everything was, I mean, it was an empty slate warehouse, you know, yeah. there's pictures online. Like it's pretty cool to see the difference. Yeah, so, I mean, we, we literally, we took the, the name Miles Sue Time and, and that's it. Everything well, else had to be redone. Sean spent a long time building the brand online and building a community. He built Automotive Museum Guide, which, because we noticed a lot of these small museums, they don't really know how to market. I don't, I think they're a little bit nervous about marketing um, and they might just be okay having it be a hobby. Um, but we wanted to be able to go and visit them and find them. And so trying to find these smaller museums that are similar to Miles Through Time, that aren't corporate, that aren't like some big benefactor that has like millions of dollars to throw at like whatever they need to. Um, we found all of the museums and built Automotive Museum Guide as a directory of all museums, big ones, small ones. And, you know, they, the, what, two years ago, maybe? And, mm-hmm. and they've, they come and go. But at least there's like some place now that people could go to find like every single museum that there is out there. And, you know, Sean's always adding more of them in there. Um, but in doing that, um, we found that, you know, maybe we can help some of those other museums out there. Uh, and now hundreds of visitors go to that website on a daily basis. And that's, so that's hundreds of people finding some sort of automotive museum somewhere in North America. And, and hopefully that, you know, gets somebody into the door of another museum somewhere and and helps keep all this history alive you know what i think about is uh the new jumanji the one that i really like Mm -hmm. like there's the map on it and like at first you only see like this little teeny spot and the map is just all black right but once they've left done that level then like the new part of the map opens up and then you can see a little bit more so you know that step back or that failing or whatever it's like the map is already like you don't have to go through that part of it again i don't know if people don't realize that but that's why like millionaires right they always say like once they made their first million like even if they lost it or their business went under like they could easily make it back and right. now that kind of makes sense because you know you have the the directions you have that already in there and the the time that you went to like build up miles through time the first time i felt was much longer than the second time it happened much quicker so the first time it it took us the three years i mean it was that last year that we were even open that it finally started to like feel like a, a real museum it was that last year that we had the the station that was built in there. Um, and then everything, everything in the new location has, I mean, it's only been a year and it, it's by far leap years ahead of what it was in the old location. Well, and we've talked in other episodes about tracking the things that you do. And so Sean's really great at tracking numbers, um, how many people come in. And so since he had that past data from the first location, um, he kind of has a general idea of like per month, who was coming in, how many, like which times were slow, which times were, were a little bit busier. And so every time like the numbers come out for the month, it's like crazy, like comparing that to, to the other location and just how much better and just how much more, even with like, you know, the coronavirus type stuff, which probably did dampen possibly, Mm -hmm. you know, some of the traffic that we would have got in the last year. um, It's still, it's a way that we can measure it against the other thing. And that's the same with, you know, my weightlifting, you know, I know how much I can squat. I know how much I can deadlift. And you know, the last time that I actually tried to squat, uh, I got five pounds less than I did the time before. I was a little bit tired. Like there's all kinds of things going on, but it wasn't like I suck because I got five pounds less. I knew that, okay, now, you know, I got to, maybe I need to rest a little bit more the day before, maybe eat something different in the morning. And maybe that just wasn't the right time. Like it's fine. Um, but that step back, I know next time, you know, work a little bit harder, prepare a little bit differently. And, um, you know, I have no problem thinking that, you know, I'm going to break my personal best again. A little bit of time may need to go by. Right. I think that that's I, right. And even when you know you can lift that heavy weight, there's, there are those days that shit that's much lighter that you can easily do. Just is it's difficult. And I mean, that's the same with your business, anything in life. 
Well, I used to get down on myself for stuff like that. Like that step back scared me. And I think maybe that's how lots of new business owners are. I don't know. Um, maybe that's more like a new parent type thing too. I think I've gotten a lot better at being able to see the big picture and realize that like, just because something goes back, it doesn't mean that I did anything wrong or that I'm a failure or that I, you know, maybe there are things I need to adjust. And then that is a good time to take a look at everything and how things are going. But it doesn't mean that I failed. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you look at the look at the NFL and you've got star quarterbacks and they, you got somebody like you know, Brett Favre or, or um, Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. I, they, they have four downs every time they have the ball to try to get a touchdown. You know, they could they could get pass it and get four four yards. They pass it again and they've got three yards. On the the third down, they lose three yards. You know that in that you know if you think of the the mental game that they have to play, that could completely screw them for getting that next first down to keep going. Where I mean, they lose those yards right there, and and mentally they could be just done. They're like, nope, we went backwards. It's over. When in reality. They have a whole nother opportunity to then give them four more opportunities to keep going. You know, and that, and life is like that. Like you have to, if you can look for things that, that correlate with, with how you should be thinking, like the football and, and yards, like it's okay. You, you, you know, when you, when you lose a few yards, because you can gain them back and then, and then that more. many more, right. you know, the very next play could be a, you know, all the way to the end zone and, and they get 63 yards and it's a touchdown. But if they would, you know, oh man, we lost three yards. That's it. Quit game the game. Over. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out of here. They'll never win ever, but you should be able to, to win. And just because you go backwards doesn't mean it's over. If anything, that, that should light a fire under your butt. And really like that next play should be the one. Right, and that I think that's what separates the greatest teams from the worst teams. You gotta get fired up when you go back a few yep. yards. You know, and, and the thing is, the the defense it, it it could be nothing the offense did wrong, it, but the defense was so good. You know, so you've you've got your business. You didn't do anything wrong, but maybe it was COVID. You know, nothing you could ha- do, and and COVID happens, and now you can't open your business the same. Well, they, we have a client, right? Right now that I talked to him last year, uh, he owns a bar and, and this whole time and when we talked to him. He's like, I, I'm just riding out the wave. You know, he's like, he, he realizes that everything's going to suck. Uh, his business took a major dip. He went backwards, but he realized all he had to do was outlast everyone else around him. And he did. And now he's like super busy, like way busier than he needs to be to the point to where he told us to turn off his Facebook messaging because he doesn't want to deal with that aspect. He just doesn't have time to deal with that on top of everything else because of how busy he is, you know? So going backwards, he was able to hold on, not lose faith. And, and like, he's killing it now. And there's a bunch of businesses that like, that's, that's how they succeed. You just, you hold on and, and, you know, eventually shit will take off. So whether it's parenting or your business or lifting weights or football, like going back is okay because you can lift heavy things. I can lift heavy things. Sean can lift heavy things. And the crazy thing is, is you can probably lift heavier things than you even think. So if you like this episode, hey, we have new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday, and we would love it if you would join us. If you want to go to ToriMathis.com, you can sign up for updates so that you never miss an episode, or you can subscribe wherever you are listening or watching this episode at, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks. Thanks.